Hey, my name's Will, N5OLA, and uh, you're in my shack where all the fun happens and the frustration. Latest candidate for frustration is this HW100. Picked it up a couple years ago at uh, an estate sale. It was um, pretty dusty. And I don't usually pick up 100s. I usually pick up HW101s. Uh, this is sort of the older brother of the 101. It's basically the same radio, except for the lack of a CW filter and a different uh, VFO tuning mechanism and uh, one or two other little incidental circuit differences. But all in all, it's pretty much the same radio. So I'm going to power this up and just see what happens. And then we're going to go through the restoration process step by step, taking enough time to explain what I'm doing so that you as a restorer can do likewise. It's not a bad looking radio. These rigs were produced from 1968 to 1970. So we can figure on it being about uh, 55 years old or thereabouts. Right now I'm looking for modifications and I see one right here. This is the phase shift circuit board. That is not original to the rig. That was produced in the later years of the HW101. Um, the original was kind of a, a sort of integrated circuit. It had all the components in one little kind of, they were sandwiched together into this kind of wafer that you would install. So that's, that's not original. Um, Of course, the belts are in bad shape, got to be replaced. Everything's dusty. We expect that. Looky there, this rig had some professional attention back in 1985. So that's a good sign. This might be a good candidate for restoration. Let's fire it up and see what happens. That's a good sign. We want that to start creeping back down as it warms up. Come on. Oh, I had the RF gain all the way down. Okay. Hey. Nice. Awesome. Let's give it a bath. One last look at all the grunge before we clean it up. This, like I said, this is pretty much par for the course. I think this rig's been in a garage. It's got some straw. I've seen these with uh, the coax gnawed by rodents. I mean, it can get really bad. This isn't bad at all. This is the part that's been known to make grown men cry. I got this step from um, a retired heat kit engineer. This is how he does it. This is how I do it. This is just plain old dish detergent. And I'm going to kind of stab it a little bit because I don't know if you can see, see that uh, kind of mottled look right there. Um, that is some really baked on grunge. You don't want to be so aggressive that you start to snapping off your capacitors, but I'm going to go in with a toothbrush into some of those uh, areas with the more resistant grunge, and uh, I will use progressively smaller brushes as I go along. And I'll rinse it, and if there's, there's still some grunge on there, I'll go back and do it again. And then same thing on the underside. And I'm going to be careful not to damage this sticker because this is part of the rig's history. It's kind of a historical artifact. Okay, and then in the oven at 170 for 20 minutes. And then I'm going to turn off the oven and let it sit in there for another 20. It's the next day and here it is. Look at those boards. Just gleaming.
that it spent about 10 hours on my back porch the next day after the oven drying. So I'd say it's ready for the next step. Next step is to check every resistor. I made up these handy cheat sheets from the manual and I laminated them because I do so damn many of these. What I'll do is just indicate any that are off and I'll come back later and replace them. I tend to replace any that are more than 15% out of tolerance. That's how I do it. Some people would say 20%. I think 15 is a good. Here's an example, 4.7K tests 6.35K. My math, oh, it's not very good. I'd say that's over 30% off. Let's change it out. And we're done. Got 14 bad resistors throughout the different boards. Most of them on the audio board. When we pull them, let's go ahead and pull these paper caps. So now that I've established which ones are bad, I mark them on the x-ray view provided in the manual. And then I pull them, I use a dental pick. Pull it, get it on this side, find the trace on the other side. And by the way, I use a, a Lazy Susan to flip it around. 20 bucks well spent. Then I find the trace and heat it up, pull it out from the other side. And there it is with the resistor replacements. All those blue and pink ones in there are new. And also, can you see one, two, three, four, these four diodes in the balance modulator, those are new too. So there's a lot of work yet to come. I've got to put some belts on here. I've got to put a belt here and align it and put the knobs on and troubleshoot. But at this point, I just want to see if I've got any tragic problems, i.e. things that explode or start to smoke. So I'm going to fire it up and see what happens. And it went out. Okay. So no power getting to the voltage regulator. I would say most of the time the problem is something mechanical, like a bad solder connection. And right here, see on this side how the wire is moving in place? Not good. I'm gonna re-solder that. So this pink wire, it should be red, but this is an old rig, so it's faded. It's pink, and this is where it comes in from the power supply with 320 odd volts, and it goes up here to the voltage regulator tube, OA2. And guess what? I'm, my, uh, I'm grounded to chassis here and, uh-oh, something's wrong. All right, it's shorting. So let's, uh, let's follow the schematic and find out what I did wrong because it wasn't doing that before. So obviously I screwed up somewhere. Let's see. Okay, here's the problem. I checked all the resistors that I installed and I looked at this one and check this out. See where it's shorting to ground? Let's clean that up. I should have caught that before, but I'm gonna fire it up again. And this time I wanna see that meter peg out. Beautiful. Come on, that's it. And as it comes down, we should start to get some sound in the speaker. And we do. Well, I've been moving along. I've got the knobs on. I just put it through the alignment process. If you want to align one of these rigs, you got to have a set of alignment tools, which I do sell on my website. And I'm noticing right away one conspicuous problem. There is nothing in lower sideband. So let's check it out. I suspect that it's a bad LSB crystal. It usually is. So I've got my frequency counter hooked up and I'm gonna put, I've got it, the black pin to ground, to chassis and red pin to the center pin of the carrier null pot right there. Okay. So in upper sideband or CW, I should have 3396. 
Let's switch it over to LSB. I should have 3393 switched it over and it's dead. So I'm going to replace the crystal. This is the Y2 crystal. I know that from checking the manual and it's really easy to pull out of there. Just happened to have one of these from one of my cadaver rigs. That's Y2. These x-ray views in the manual are just fabulous. Literally 30 seconds to desolder that crystal and pull it out of there. And I'm gonna pop that in right there. And I did it. Thank you for the call. Have a good evening. QRZ, Whiskey 6 Golf. November 5, Oscar Lima Alpha. November 5, Oscar Lima Alpha. Thank you for the call. Uh, another nice signal. 5 nine plus 20 over the pileup. Name is Nick, November India, Charlie Kilo. Thank you, Nick. Name is Will, Whiskey India, Lima, Lima. You're uh, about 20 over 9 yourself here in South Texas, and I just want to mention that you're my first QSO on this old Heathkit HW100. Thank you for the report. Oh, wow, that's a blast from the past. Wow, uh, I haven't seen one of those in years, and you sound real good, Will. Thank you so much. You uh, just finished a restoration. Well, you, you got your money's worth. Uh, <laughs> uh, I tell you, it sounds really nice. Uh, it's good to hear an old 10, uh, 100 again. I had my my uh, heat kit. My, I had a heat kit once. It was a hot water 16. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice radio. They they bring back memories. So thank you, Will. I got you in the lawn. Uh, congratulations on being. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy to be your first uh, QSO in your restored H100, HW100. And uh, have a good evening. You are that whiskey six golf. Awesome. One thing is bothering the hell out of me. That. And as it happens, I know a guy who sells these insets. And there we go. Man, the details really make a difference. Is the buyer of this rig going to know that I spent a dollar to get that metallic inset on that knob? Probably not, but I know. So, it looks good. It works great. But now we got to do a couple pieces of fine-tuning, and that starts with neutralizing the finals. Very important step. And I'm going to do it in a way that's not given in the manual. This is the alternate way. This is given in the uh, Heathkit service bulletins. Hopefully I have put a link to this page on the YouTube description because this is how you do it. Don't forget to install the tube shields like I almost did. Three tube shields, one, two, three. The next alignment step involving the RF probe is nulling the carrier. This is my ugly little homebrew RF probe. I've got the, uh, I've got it grounded to the chassis and I'm just going to remotely clip it to the antenna input. I always do this with the radio off because I'm terrified of touching any of that stuff. So good idea to leave it off. I've got the mic CW level all the way counterclockwise. Pre-selector where it needs to be and the final where it needs to be. Now I'm just going to key the mic and see if I get anything on my meter. Oh yeah. We don't want that. That's the carrier null pot. And then here is a carrier null trimmer to fine tune it. I'm gonna start with that one. Just made a discovery. I'm turning the null potentiometer back and forth. I'm not getting any change. So this tells me that I gotta replace this guy. And that's a very common repair on these old rigs. This pot doesn't stand the test of time at all. This is where that 200 ohm potentiometer mounts to the underside 
of the uh, modulator board. What I did was I just clipped off the leads, uh, desoldered them, and I'm gonna leave that in there because otherwise I've got a big gaping hole. This is electrically the same thing as that, except it's modern. It's a 20 turn, 200 ohm potentiometer. I like to mount it with the screw away from that tube. Makes it a lot easier to adjust it. And there it is. Okay, I've reattached the RF probe to the antenna input. And uh, let's try it again. Click. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this. And now we're bringing that carrier oscillation as far down as it will go. Well, that's about it. I'm gonna check it out on all bands, make sure it's got full output, and uh, then turn my attention to the cabinet. There's uh, 80 meters, full output, 40 meters, full output, 20 meters, full output, there's 15 meters, full output, uh, almost full output, let's see, there we go, and finally 10 meters. A little bit of SWR there, but uh, there we go. That is full output. So the cabinet is salvageable. It's not great, but I think I can clean this up and bang out some of the dents and use a little touch-up paint and uh, start out by just uh, giving it a good bath. Looks like rain today. Better move fast. I'm gonna give this a light sanding and then I've decided I am going to paint it. Right here is some touch-up paint that I had. It doesn't look good up against this green. However, it's pretty close and I think I can get away with painting just the top and leaving the bottom, just cleaning the bottom. I don't wanna paint the bottom half of the cabinet because that's where the silk screening is and I hate having to run out the lettering on a label maker. Ugh. So I'm going to lightly sand this and then prime it and paint it. I've tried these different colors, but they just didn't quite match. I ended up with a custom matched paint that I actually sell these on my website in 50LA.com. This is the uh, Heathkit Green. I also sell a paint for the SB line rigs. I've got them in uh, spray paint and also in little touch-up bottles. Well, there's the final product. I really am happy with that. It does have some shiny patches um, where the old paint was uh, gone. And there's also, you can see where there were gashes in the old paint. Those are still kind of showing up faintly, but you know what? I think that's quite nice. I'm really happy with that. And it's a pretty good match with the bottom part of the chassis. This is the silk screening that I didn't want to lose by having to spray paint this part. And I won't have to. Well, that's it. She's all put back together. She's tuned, aligned, and ready for action. This is my first restoration of an HW100. And I have to say, I'm rather impressed. Really nice booming receiver. Um, nice output. Sure looks good with all this new hardware and the new paint job. Not perfect. It is a little bit warped here and there. You know, these things are, what, almost 60 years old. So, you know, we do our best with what we got and I feel like this one is ready for many decades of faithful service. So that's it. Thank you for watching and uh, keep on restoring. Let's keep these boat anchors alive. This is N5OLA.